enormous power, it's a huge power. <laughs> Words that reveals the light of Hashem, brings Hashem into this world. And Hashem Himself he is above this world, so when He's coming, so He's changing the nature. So everything that you need, and you find it that it's hard for you to achieve, so the way to achieve it is to bring Hashem into this situation, and then Hashem Barach is above nature, and He can change all systems and settings of nature. The truth is that it's in our power to bring Hashem in Bach to every situation and to heal every situation and to bring salvation and complete redemption to every situation in our life, to fix every single detail that is bent, that is crooked, that is weak, that is broken in our life by the main reason of all reasons source of all sources, the Creator Himself. The way to do that is just to set our minds to faith, just to believe. And there can be miracles when you believe. The power of faith is the biggest power of them all. It's the power that reveals the light out of the darkness. The person, he falls into darkness, he falls into his fears, he falls into, into the hands of the power of imagination to think like there is a reality of this world that he's trapped in. But the truth is that when Hashem is by your side, the night will shine like the day. Rules of nature cannot force Hashem to anything. Hashem, He holds the world inside of Him. The world cannot contain Hashem. There is a Midrash, an ancient Midrash, that is telling on what that is about to happen in Judgment Day. That Hashem in Barach, it's written on Him that He's coming with His white cloak, royal garments, but the white, bright ones that he's coming, wearing them for Judgment Day. And he's coming from a place called Batsra, that all of his white clothes are red from blood. And then he's coming to slaughter the evil inclination, the Yetzirah, the Samech Mem himself. And when he's judging, when Hashem Barach is judging the Yetzirah, so the Yetzirah is saying to Hashem, he's so rude that he finds himself arguing and disrespecting Hashem even in Judgment Day. And he's saying to Hashem, what do you want from me? What have I done? You sent me to do all the things. You were the one that sent me and, and set me free to do whatever I want in this world. So if I'm going to be punished, you should be punished as well. That's what the evil inclination, the Yetzirah, is saying to Hashem. So Hashem is telling him, no problem, I'm coming with you. And they're going together, both of them, to hell. Hashem and the Yetzirah. And the fire of hell is overpowering on the evil inclination on the Yetzara and burning him. And Hashem Barak is just hanging out. <laughs> it's all cool and happy because the fire of hell cannot touch Hashem. It's like a joke to say to Hashem Barak those things. Because Hashem Barak, he doesn't have no physical side to his being. The physicality that we are aware to, that we know, that we feel, our only covering is that are blocking the light of Hashem. But Hashem Himself, He's behind those walls, behind those curtains. He Himself is beyond this world completely. He's spiritual, He's divine. Not like us that we have that body that is locking us here. The body is a result of an oath that our souls 
are taking in heaven when they're about to come down to this world. So court in heaven are forcing them, the judges in court are forcing the souls to take that oath. And when they make that oath, so they're being dressed into bodies, into physical bodies, and now they're trapped inside those bodies. And when they're trapped inside those bodies, so they have a physical aspect. But the truth is that our souls are also not belong to this world. So when a person wants to set himself free from all of the constrictions, from all of the difficulties, from all of the darkness that is surrounding him, there is only one thing that he should do, to unchain himself, to set himself free. He needs to remind himself of Hashem. He needs to remind of himself of the fact that he is also part of Hashem, and those two parts will never be separated, like that it's written. There is a triangle. One is Hashem. One part of that triangle is Hashem. The second part is the person, it's the souls of of our nation, the holy souls that are seeking and yearning to find the truth. And the third part of the triangle is the Torah, the wisdom, the connection, the guidings of the Creator to His people, that we cannot learn how to come closer to Hashem without having that recipe, without having those guidings, the set of rules that are aiming us and hinting to us exactly what we should do to come closer to Him. So there are two sides and a link between them, that's the Torah. The two sides is the spiritual side and the same spiritual soul trapped in a physical body means beyond, behind the curtains, but it's the same soul. And the Midrash is calling, the Zohar Kadosh is calling the souls Mein Bochim, crying water that from the moment that we've been separated from heaven, we never stopped crying. The souls from inside our bodies, and sometimes people are not even aware to that sorrow, that great horrible pain that they feel inside, are crying 24 hours a day, crying, 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 all of the time. Always crying, always hoping, always, always, always hoping when, when I'm going to see Hashem, when I'm going to come back to Hashem, when I'm going to feel Hashem, when I'm going to sense Hashem, when me and Hashem will be one, when we will never going to be separated ever again. All of those hopes are showing to us on the complete unity, the ancient unity, between our souls to the Creator Himself. Now when you feel that the physicality is overpowering on you, making your life harder, you lose hope, you feel so stressed, you feel so crushed in the physical world with all of the obligations and, and, and all the things you need and, 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 and you feel the darkness, in those moments there is only one outlet, there is only one lifeline to run into your inside, to hide inside your own soul. Like that Hashem Barach is telling us about Himself, that when He feels the sorrow, so on Him, on the Creator Himself, it's written, Bamistarim tivke nafshi, He is hiding. Hashem's spirit, so-called, Hashem's soul, so-called, is hiding itself in the hidden places and crying over them. When you feel sorrow, when you feel pain, you need to go into the hidden place of your own soul, to the roots of your soul, and to fuel yourself, to fill yourself, to refill yourself from the spiritual spring that we have inside. And every one of us must understand that the source of spirituality that lives inside of him is endless. The amount of salvation that you can bring out from your own soul depends only in how many buckets you're going to bring down to that well to take out water from there. It's not depends in your power, it's not depends in your wisdom, it's not depends in your money, it's not depends in how righteous you are. It depends only in how strong you will be with your will never to give up. Never ever to give up on your dreams, on your goals, on your hopes, 
on your yearnings, never to back off. That's the only thing that we received from heaven that is connecting to us completely to Him. And when we follow our heart like that, we can hear the voice of heaven speaking from our own inside. You can close your eyes and to be inside of a speech of the Creator. You can feel the presence of Hashem. You can hear Hashem calling you from inside. There are verses that are teaching us things and the verses are calling us to look into our inside. Sometimes the verses are telling you, be aware from the outside, from the external world. But when the verses are teaching us on how to come closer to Hashem, we must interpret all of those verses in Pnimiut. That they have a spiritual aspect and that's the main guiding. To try to see how to keep the Torah spiritually inside your soul. Not only physically. Okay, you need to put filin. Great. You need to keep Shabbat. You need to eat kosher. Great. You're obligated. You need to. You must do. Great. Do that. But a prayer without an intention is like a body without a soul. When you keep a mitzvah without a heart, without a spiritual bonding, it's like a dead body. Is it nice to have a bad dead body? It's, is, is it something you wish to have somewhere in your house, in your life? You, it, no, thank you. You don't want that. It, it smells bad. We don't want that. So also, the mitzvot, when you keep them without intention, without that understanding that the Creator, He is the one that gave you now that opportunity to connect yourself to Him, if you're not connecting yourself to Him while keeping to our mitzvot, so you just dealing with the physicality, with physical, physical things. And then, what's the worth? It's all temporary anyway. It's all got bad smell. I told that story once. I went to the field to do a, a, a long in Bodedut, and I was talking to Hashem in the field, and I was uh, praying and asking requests. And, and I came to, a, to like a humble place. I felt with myself like I'm, I'm, I'm humbled. I was humiliated by the presence of Hashem. And I, I felt like I wanted to go another step into that humility. I wanted to feel really that there is only Hashem. And I, and I, and I was thinking it was a nice summer day in, 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 in Israel. And I felt like, okay, what can I do to, to, to come closer to Hashem? And I felt like maybe I'm just really going to bring myself down and going to let Hashem Ibarach fill the, the, the world. When you stand like that, tall and, and strong and, and, and praying, so still you have some, some power, you still show some power. I felt like maybe I'm, I'm going to lie down on the grass, on the ground. I'm, I'm going to connect myself to, I'm going to be low, I'm going to be humble. And then I was lying like that. It's not allowed to lie like that on the back, so I was lying on... On my, on my face, and I was on my body, and I was relaxed, and I was breathing. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, here you are lying on the ground, and the ground is here under you, and what's the difference between you to the earth, to the ground? Nothing. This is physical earth, and you're physical, and there is no difference except, and then it came to me that the earth smells so good and I am so stink. And I felt that. I felt that you can think to yourself that you are like the ground, but you're so far from that even. When you're checking yourself, you're so not clean. That even when you try to humble yourself, you have some arrogant in trying to humble yourself. Okay, now I'm going to be humble, and, and, and I'm going to have... <laughs> no, that's not what you need. To humble yourself is really to clean yourself completely. To understand that there is nothing except of Hashem. That Hashem is the only existence in the world. That there is nothing except of Him. And He is you. And you are not here at all. So who are you? You're the vessel that experiences Hashem. And you can only feel Him 
And you can only walk with Him because He is walking inside of you. Inside of my nation, inside of my people. Hashem is in. Hashem is inside of us. Hashem is your soul. Hashem is talking from your mouth. Hashem looks through your eyes. Can you look? Can you see? Do you have the power of vision? Can you open your eyes and see? The verse is saying, the blessing is saying, that Hashem gives you the power to see. And where that power is coming from? From the eyes of Hashem that are walking and watching and looking to every corner and, and cannot miss a thing. So from the eyes of Hashem, we can see because He shared His power with us and from His power of speech that it's written on Him, that He created things by saying, He was saying, they're going to be light, and that's it, there was light. He said, they're going to be earth, and some there's earth, fruits, fruits, animals, animals. He made it all. How? With His power of speech. So our power of speech is not ours. You want to talk and suddenly you don't have words. Me, before every class, I'm thinking to myself, okay, what should I talk about now? What am I going to say? What am I going to tell them? Hashem is preparing me to the classes in the most fantastic way of them all. He's cleaning me completely. I'm coming totally blank to the class. I don't have a clue what I'm going to talk about in the next class. Never, ever. Even now, if you're going to ask me what am I about to say, I don't have a clue. I'm not planning those classes. I'm just sharing with you from the light that Hashem Barach is giving to me when I'm standing with you right now. When I'm home with my wife, with my children, I'm doing what that Hashem wants for me in those situations. When I'm coming to be here with you, I'm just opening myself and trying to see what Hashem Barach wants from me now, in the present. Because Hashem Barach, He is the only reality that exists. So this is why, except of letting him run the show and make the difference and make himself revealed and seen, there's nothing else that we can do. Just not to interrupt Hashem. Just let him speak. Let him be. Let him express himself through you. How are you going to do that? How are you going to know if it's you or him? First of all, like we said, there is no real you. Just you can speak from two places. You can speak from the power of your soul, and you can speak from the power of your physicality, from your body, from your needs, from your pain, from your sorrow, from your lack of understanding and, and, and your confusions. But when you connect yourself to your soul, so then you're actually not talking from yourself, because your true self is really connected to Hashem Barach, to infinity. And from that place, when you talk, so then the verse is saying on that, Kipi Hashem It's the mouth of Hashem that is talking to you. When Am Yisrael are coming to Moshe, and Moshe is opening his mouth and talking and telling them things, who is talking from the mouth of Moshe? Hashem. Kipi Hashem So, how Moshe achieved that level? Because Moshe Rabbeinu, he was the most humble person in the world. What does it mean, the most humble person in the world? The most humble person in the world means a person that put Hashem in Barach in front of him in every situation. That in every situation he's looking for keeping the will of Hashem. Now Hashem, what do you want from me right now? And what do you want from me right now? And Hashem, what can I do for you right now? And now what do you want from me? And then you put yourself always behind of Hashem and then you're not blocking the light of Hashem because Hashem is in front of you. So you're not blocking the light of Hashem. But when you have your needs and your desires and Hashem is supposed to work for you, so then Hashem Ibarach's light cannot illuminate in full power because your physicality is blocking the light of Hashem. And then twisted words are coming out of your mouth and confused words and confused thoughts and you don't know and you're not sure and you have doubts and you're doubting, will Hashem be with me? And you're blocking the light of Hashem. And it's you that is interfering, that is interrupting the light of Hashem from expressing itself completely. And there is what to do. What you need to do? You need to move yourself to the sides. You need to remove yourself. You need to try to ask Hashem, Hashem, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? What's the purpose of my life? What do you want from me? How can I do something good in this world to make you happy? to complete my mission in this world, 
What do you want me to do? What is my real purpose, Hashem? And to put Hashem in Barach in the peak of, 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 of your to-do list in, in, in the, in the, in the in, in, first in your mind. Like in the morning you wake up, you need to thank Hashem in Barach, Modeh not to read from the book, to say from the heart, thank you Hashem for waking me up. Thank you Hashem for bringing me again to this world. Rabbi Munatecha, you have huge faith. Hashem's got huge faith. What can you, how can you say that Hashem got such huge faith? What does it mean that Hashem got huge faith? Hashem believes in me, that's why He woke me up. You have faith, you have faith in me. You still give me a chance. You still have hope for me. That I'm going to fix myself. That I'm going to understand something today. That God, I'm going to come closer to you, Hashem. That God, I'm going to work on my middle, my attributes. That I'm going to be nicer today. I'm going to learn a little bit. Maybe I'm going to purify myself somehow. You still have hope. And that's why you woke me up. If you would think that I would just destroy, you wouldn't wake me up. When Hashem Ibarach still got hope from the person, so he supplies tools and power and advice and wisdom to that person to succeed. And confidence and faith, those are the power powers that are giving us the, the wisdom to know exactly how to come closer to Hashem. And the way to believe is to close the eyes. The way to count on Hashem Barach is not to plan. is to follow Hashem Barach, Lechtech Acharai Midbar, to walk after Hashem into the desert. Like that Hashem is saying to Abraham Avinu, you need to go out from the house of your parents to the land that I'm going to show you. Means to the unknown. And it's not always means you need to make Aliyah. It doesn't always mean you need to make Aliyah, you need to do Aliyah. No! It means that you need to go out from what that you know, from what that you think that is right, from what that you think that is familiar and comfortable, and that's your comfort and that's your security. No! You must break those chains because those chains are stopping you from growth, from growing, from blooming, from succeeding from feeling the presence of Hashem. Because when you connect yourself to your soul, there is no moment, there is no time that can hold you back from achieving the heights, from bringing more and more and more buckets of water, of pure water, water of Torah, water of life, water that will revive the dead, water that can shine the world with kindness, with grace, with, with, with generosity with love, with support, with honor, with justice, with respect, with beauty, with spirituality. Things that are so high and amazing are available for us, but we don't believe in our power. And that is what that holds us back. Rabbi Nachman of Wester, in the introduction to his book, in, in, he, he wrote a song, and in that song he's, he's telling about the, the, the elephant and the camel that they are very strong animals, but they're not aware to their powers. So, eat to their power. So, even if the mice will pull them from the nose, they will follow him. Because they're not aware, they, they, they're not resisting. I said it a few times, only dead fish are swimming with the stream. The live fish are always fighting always choosing, always going against the stream, looking for, for, for what that they desire. That's a life person. A life person, he's always going to do something. He's got a purpose in life, and he's not backing off, and he's thinking and planning and hoping and praying and doing and making and calling and talking and saying and building and developing and always doing more. Why? Because he's alive. He's got the will to live, to succeed, to do, to reveal, to uncover, to show. But the dead person is a sad person. He's depressed. He doesn't have no more power anymore. He's dead. He lost his will to live. He doesn't have a reason to wake up in the morning. He doesn't feel, doesn't want to feel and deal with the next day. He wants just to bury himself under the pillows and blankets and to go into another dream. And even nightmares are better for him than... Than, than to deal in real, real time with, with reality. But that's only because that you chose death instead of life. If you will choose real life, eternal life, to live your life with the source of life, 
to live your life with the Creator, you will be in such an inspiring period of time in your life, in such an amazing move. And if you're not going to back off from that desire to live, you're going to become spiritual even in your physical body. Like Moshe Rabbeinu. That Moshe went with his will all the way. And the proof for that is that it's written on Moshe Rabbeinu that when he passed away, he passed away in Ra'avad Ravin, in the time of Mincha in Shabbat. That in that time, the will of all will, the will of Hashem is being revealed in the world in, in, in its full power. And Moshe Rabbeinu passed, him, passed to the world to come in that moment, in that time. Because he wanted Hashem Yitbarach with all of his heart. So Hashem Yitbarach wanted him with all of his heart. The numeral value of the name Moshe is 345. That's the numeral value of the word Moshe. One level above that, 346, is the normal value of the word Ratzon, will. When Moshe is trying to climb to the next level, to reach the next step, his success will be to want Hashem. What Moshe desire, what Moshe wants to achieve, he wants to want. That's what he wants. He wants to want. He wants to want Hashem. That's what he wants. He doesn't want to put filin now. He doesn't really want to keep Shabbat now. He understands that while he will keep those mitzvot, when he will connect himself through that filin to Hashem, he can find Hashem in a deeper way with a deeper meaning. He knows that through Shabbat, that with Shabbat, he can connect himself to Hashem in a way that you cannot connect yourself without Shabbat. So he wants to know Hashem in Shabbat. But Shabbat is not his purpose. Tefillin is not his purpose. To sit and learn to lie, it's not his purpose. It's not a purpose. The purpose is the Tachlit, like the, the Zohar Kadosh is saying, is to know Him and to recognize Him, the Blessed One. How are you going to know Him? While keeping to our mitzvot, through the mitzvot. When you're going to keep the mitzvot, you're going to recognize Him. And there are many, many mitzvot. Not all of the mitzvot is like those keeping Shabbat, you're allowed to do, you're not allowed to do, putting tefillin, where should you put them, how you should put them, which blessing you say before or after. Not all of the mitzvot are like that. There are many, many mitzvot that a person can find himself related to without understanding that he's keeping Torah mitzvot now. Just to eat healthy, it's a mitzvah. Because the verse is saying that you must watch over yourself to be healthy and strong, and it's an obligation from the Bible. You must keep yourself healthy. So if now you feel like eating a good meal, you're keeping mitzvah midoraita. That might be even more important than tefillin. We don't know which mitzvah is greater than which. We don't know the level, the weight, the importance of the mitzvot. We don't know. To keep yourself healthy is one of the obligations that Hashem is obligating us through the Torah. To be nice, to be kind, to smile to people. It's all included in Ve'avta L'Racha Kamocha. That Rabbi Akiva said that Ve'avta L'Racha Kamocha, to love your friend like you love yourself, means to be nice. Just to share and to love and to care. Is the mitzvah that includes all the rest of the mitzvot inside of it, Rabbi Akiva said, it's Klal Gadol Batorah, and it's the greatest one of them all. Just to be nice, just to smile to people, just to be as nice as you can. And to be generous and to make a phone call, it's also charity. If you called one person and you were nice to him, if you just sent him a message, hey, how are you doing, I'm with you, that's charity. It can give him life. Charity doesn't have to be money. It can be also money. Also when you support someone, also when you help someone. Things that you can feel so close to, and they can connect you to Hashem. So the main thing is to focus on the intention, on the purpose. Okay, I'm doing the things I like, but I'll do them from now on with a purpose. To connect myself to Hashem through those things that I'm, not, uh, that I'm doing. 
And not only to do those things. Oh, it's so important to give charity. Okay, so now all day long he will be in stress, but I'm poor. I don't have money. Okay, now I have one dollar, so I'm going to give it. Oh, thank God, I got my payroll. Okay, now I'm going to give one hundred dollars. Okay, so you lose your mind. That's not the way. You need to want to connect yourself to Hashem, and then in that moment, you're going to connect yourself to Hashem in Barach in anything that Hashem in Barach is making in your life. If for you now to connect yourself to Hashem, it's only when you're learning Torah. So what are you going to do in those hours that you cannot learn Torah? If for you to connect yourself to Hashem, it's when you pray, when you do it with a dude, it's when you light candles, it's when you, I don't know what. So what are you going to do in those hard hours that you're broken, that you're lost, that you're confused? In those hours you're not serving Hashem? Why? You set that rule for yourself. You designed your own way of thinking and being negative about those hard hours like you cannot relate yourself to Hashem from those dark places. But it's written that Hashem is saying to us that He's with us even in the most contaminated places. When they are impure in the most contaminated places, Hashem is saying, that's my place. I'm with you. No problem. Even if I'll go in the valley of death, I won't see anything bad, I won't be afraid because Hashem is with me in the valley of death. In the lowest place of hell, I saw, here you are, here. Not Hashem is there, not where is He. Hineka, you were here. When I reached rock bottom of hell, I saw, there you are, here you are. You're here with me, so I won't be afraid. Because you're with me. I'm not going to be afraid. doesn't mean I won't feel pain. My body will feel pain. No one is exempt from pain. You think that Moshe Rabbeinu was celebrating and dancing 24-7? No. Moshe Rabbeinu being rebuked. Moshe Rabbeinu being insulted. Moshe Rabbeinu being ashamed. Moshe Rabbeinu suffered. Moshe Rabbeinu was hungry. Moshe Rabbeinu was thirsty. For 10 years of his life, he was in prison, in a, in a hole, in a well, in the desert, as a prisoner of Jethro, of Yitro. 10 years of his life, and Zipporah, before of their wedding, she was coming every day and bringing down bread and water to that well, to his prison. And for 10 years he was there living his life in darkness, alone, eating bread and water, and only praying to Hashem. For 10 years after he ran away from Egypt to the desert. So do we think to ourselves, no, I'm suffering because I'm such a criminal, because I'm so low, because I'm so far. That's nonsense. That's the trick of the evil inclination to make a fool out of you. To make you feel so bad and destroyed about yourself that you're going to lose hope. That you're going to come to that sadness and depression. Oh no, me, I don't have a chance. Look at me. I'm not waking up in the mornings. I cannot learn Torah. I'm not modest enough. I'm, I'm not talented enough. I'm not gifted. I'm not wealthy. I'm not beautiful. I'm not rich. I'm not nice. I don't have friends. All of those things that you feel about yourself are those features of the evil inclination that got only one purpose for you, and it's to destroy your happiness. It's to shut you down and to make you crazy, to lose your mind from sadness, to make you mad on yourself, and angry, and frustrated, and hating yourself, and by that, separated completely from joy, from happiness, from hope, from the Creator. But Hashem wants you to be happy. How are you going to be happy? But I'm suffering. I don't have a house. I don't have money. I don't have a car. I don't have a wife. I don't have children. Oh, how you want me to be happy? You think that if I'm going to give you now money and a house and a wife and children, you're going to be happy? I promise to you that if you're a sad person, you will wash your family, your children, your house, your car with sadness. You're going to depress your family. You're going to destroy your house. You're going to ruin your car and your career. And whatever you're going to receive, you're going to destroy. Why? Because you're sad. Because sad, sadness is, 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 is uh, it's, it's contaminated. It's an impure thing. It's contamination. The sadness itself is a sin. 
So if you're a sinner and you go with your sadness and you're not doing tshuva on your sadness, you're not trying to fix your sadness, just you feel that the fact that you are sad is justified and you are sad and you're stubborn with your sadness and your depression and you try to make the world think that you are right that you are sad. So by doing that, you're establishing and, and, and stucking yourself in that condition and there is no way out from that for you. Because you chose to bring yourself into the hands of, 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 of the devil, to allow his advice to control your life. And you followed his advice of hate, and hate yourself, and blame yourself, and, 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 and want to revenge yourself, and destroy yourself. And all of those things are completely sins. There is no connection to reality, to the real purpose of life, to the real meaning and will of Hashem Yidvarach from you while you're sad and depressed. So what you're going to do, what a person should do. You should pull yourself always to try to find the wisdom, the light that is behind those curtains that are blocking the light from you. There are people that when they're falling, immediately they're trying to blame everyone else in their failures. Oh, I'm suffering, it's because of him, and my prayers are not being accepted because of him, and why things are happening to me because of her, because of him, because of them, because of they, because of, I don't know, and the worst because of me. Who are you? You think you're able to hold the salvations of Hashem? You think that you have the ability to reject Hashem if Hashem wants to shine on you? The only way to connect ourselves to Hashem is just to throw ourselves on Him, to believe in Him, and to count on Him. And if you feel, oh, those are nice words, practically, what are I supposed to do? What is the advice? Okay, I want to be happy, but I'm falling to my sadness. Okay, I want to be glad, I want to do things, I want to be positive, but things that happen to me are stabbing me in the back. I'm falling, I'm failing, I'm losing my happiness, I'm losing my joy. What do you want from me? What's the advice? There is only one advice. The advice is to want. It's the will. It's to decide that no matter where you're going to find yourself, in the lowest place of them all, you will stand up back on your feet and start walking away from that darkness. That's the only way out. To keep on marching, to keep on walking. People escape from prison with a teaspoon. Why? Because that's what they had. It's not the best way out with a teaspoon, right? From Alcatraz prison. No, it's not the easiest way out. But when that's what you have, and you want to be out, you're going to find a way. You're going to find a way out from the most impossible situations. Why? Because your will is your power to achieve things. And if you're not going to back off from that power, then that is the spiritual power that you have. The will is the light of your soul. The illumination of the will, that's the illumination of the soul. When the soul of the person is shining and illuminating in the most brightest light, the person wants completely. He wants Hashem with all of his heart, like Moshe, that connected himself to Hashem in that moment, the will of all wills, that he wanted Hashem completely. He didn't want it, no Coke, no Pepsi, no diet, no fruits, no healthy food, no, no, nothing. He didn't want fibers in it. He didn't care about anything. He didn't want it, cars, no houses, no a house in Jerusalem. No, he didn't want it, anything. He didn't want it. He didn't care about no properties, no wealth, no money, no business. His mind was aimed completely to the purpose. And then when you aim like that to the will of Hashem, in that moment, what that you will receive is Hashem. Because in the path that the person wants to walk in, that will be the path that they will lead you on. So if you want money, in the end you'll have money. If you want a house, in the end you'll have a house. If you want to get married, in the end you will get married. The question is, what will come out from that wedding? What will come out from that money? What will come out from that light? 
Is that house that you will receive will be the house of Hashem? Or that it's going to be just a dark place that you will sit and, 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 and listen to your rock and roll and, and, and whatever with sadness and depression? Another shelter, another basement. Another, okay, yeah. When you want Hashem, you will find Hashem. When you want the truth, you will find the truth. My wife asked me yesterday, do you really believe, I'll tell you a story now, soon I'm going to tell you a story, something fantastic. My wife asked me yesterday, do you really believe in what that you're saying in your classes? So I told her, yes. And then she said, no, but really. Do you really believe in everything that you're saying in your classes? I told her, listen, I know that what that I'm saying is the truth. And I tell you how. Because to tell you what the truth is, is not something that I'm able to do. Who am I to tell you what the truth is? What can I tell you? Who I am? Who am I? About myself, I can tell you. I know about myself that I don't want anything else except of the truth. So I'm full with confidence that whatever that I'm finding is real, is the truth. Because myself, I can check. I can check what I want. If I see Coke, my son came to me, there's those small, amazing bottles of Coke, I'll show you. My son was so excited, and he saw that, and he came to me, Father, you want? I told him, no. Because I don't want. I wanted to make him happy. But the drink, I didn't care about. Why I didn't care about it? Because I didn't came here to drink. So I don't care about the drinks. They can be amazing bottles, so expensive wine and, and, and scotch. I wouldn't care. It wasn't, wouldn't even like take my eye for a second. Why? Because I don't want to drink. I'm not thirsty. And, I, and, 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 and that's why I'm not finding myself attached to those physical things. And when I'm checking myself and I'm finding myself that my will is complete only to serve Hashem and only to commit myself to Hashem, I can be full of confidence that what that I'm finding is the truth. It's the real truth. And that's why I also never guide people to follow me, to follow my advice. I'm only guiding them to find themselves, to find the truth by themselves. Because I'm full of confidence that the truth will reveal itself. Which truth? My truth? No, the real truth, the truth. I'm sure that if me and you will walk and search for the truth, and both of us are going to do it with all of our power, we're going to reach the same point in the end because there is one truth. So I don't need to take you to my place and to make you follow me because that's not the truth. The truth is that you will find happiness in your house, in your body, with your friends, in, with your family, in your life. You need a car. I don't need a car. So the truth for you is to find a car. For me, I don't need a car. Chaim is taking care of the car. I don't need a car. Everyone is busy with something, something else. So I know that I want Hashem. So then I can tell you that from my life experience, when you want something, you achieve it. So why to want small things, like a house, like properties, like money? You should want the thing that is above everything. That when you achieve that, it will include everything else. That's faith. That's the closeness to Hashem. Kirvat Elohim Litov. To be close to God, that's good. To be close to God. To be close to Hashem. That's the best thing that there is in this world. And then everything is blessed. Ishemunot Rav Brachot, the man of faith, the person that got faith, he's got all the blessings. He will never going to eat something wrong. He will never going to say something wrong. And even if something will seem to be wrong came out of his mouth, if you will listen carefully, it was perfect for you. It was exactly what that you were supposed to hear. Because it came from a holy source, so for sure it's holy. Now I told you that I'll tell you a secret, something amazing that happened. So I told you, and I told my students, I told people in, in my classes that everyone can achieve huge things in life. And that the spirituality, the door to spirituality is open for everyone that will demand, that will ask, that will want it. 
in what it all depends, in your will. Now, I know about myself that I really love the righteous people. I have loved righteous people. I really care about righteous people. I want to learn from them. I want to hear their speeches. Even the ones that wrote things, verses, and, and the, their, their, their words of Torah in the Gemara and, and, and in the Mishnayot, in the Talmud. I have the desire to be close to them. When I lived in the Holy Land in Israel, so all of the time I was going to graves of righteous people and I was, I was putting my kids to sleep, 9 p.m., I would go and drive to Bnei Brak, to the grave of Rabbi Yudazev Levovich, the Chazon Ish, the Stipler HaKadosh, and the, the, the Mort and Tzadikim, Rabbi Yaakov uh, Kohen, that is buried over there, and now also Chacham Avraham Chai. And I went to those graves and I was praying, that's Bnei Brak. And after that, I would go to Natanya. In Natanya there is another cemetery. And over there in that cemetery, the Saba Kadosh Rabbi Israel, um, Rabbi Saba Israel, and I went to his grave. And also one of the Admorim is buried over there in that cemetery. And I went and I was praying in that. And we're talking about the same night. It's one hour drive from Jerusalem to Bnei Brak, and then one hour over there in Bnei Brak, and then another hour to Natanya. And from Natanya I would go to the north. And I'm telling you that I was doing that thing, like I don't know, maybe hundreds of times. I have so many students that came to me and joined to me in those, in those drives. And so many times I did it alone myself. And I went to Tveria and the graves of Rabbi, Rabbi Meir Balanes and Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Yochanan and the Ramba Makadosh and all the righteous people that are buried over there. And then I was going to Meron. And we're talking the same night and it's crazy. You don't do those things. And I know, but I did. And so many times. And I went to Meron and I'm praying in Meron. And then on the way back, I'm going through Haifa. And in Haifa, in the old cemetery, there are other Tanaim and uh, Amoraim that are buried over there, of Dimi de Minchefa, and more righteous people from the family of Abu Lafia and other righteous people that are buried over there. And in Tveria, like I told you, more righteous people. Now another uh, graveyard with, with the students of the Baal Shem Tov. And then on the way back from Haifa to Jerusalem, I would stop in Haram and Uchot in Jerusalem. And I went to the grave of Rabbi Yashiv and to other righteous people that are buried over there. And I was crying and I was praying and I was doing... One time I did 11 hours in Bodedut and I'm just talking and crying to Hashem. And one time I did 18 hours in a row. I did six hours and immediately when I finished, I started another six and I, when I finished those, I did another six hours. And it's crazy, I know, but that's... That's my desire. That's when, when, when I'm shining, that's what it happens with me. That's how I shine. And I walked and I went and I'm praying and I was hoping to assure him and I, I did all of those things. But now, when I'm here, so where am I going to go? Okay, so I've been to the oil. And that's it. And now I can go to the oil again. And it's great, but that's about it. Like maybe it's something else that I'm not aware of. But... It's not the same, okay? Now, a few days ago, a student of, 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 of mine wrote a very inspiring email to us, to the, to the Muna project, and over there he described the inspired inspiration, the feeling that he's got when he hears my lectures, when he hears my conversations. And I, I was touched by that. I, I felt like, thank you, I, I, I was full with gratitude to that person on, on, on Loving me so much, caring about my words, finding them so interesting and taking them to his heart. And I, I felt very impressed by that. And I shared it with my wife. Now, my wife, yesterday, I came to, to the house after the class that, that, that I gave in, in Crown Heights. And I told her some funny situation that happened to me in the class. And I wanted to, to share it with her, to show her that video. So... We pushed play on, 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 on the Facebook and, and she watched the class and suddenly she's looking and she's saying, I want to tell you it's terrifying. I told her, what? What are you talking about? What happened? She said, you remember the face of that righteous man of Alter David Chaim Stern? Alter David Chaim Stern is a righteous man that I met in Bnei Brak. He's a very, very righteous man, a very holy person. And he spoke with me many, many long, long conversations about the purpose of my life. What should I do and, and how I'm going to 
become who that I supposed to be and what's the purpose and what should I do and which experience I'm going to have and we're talking about a student of the of the Chaz, of the Chazon Ish a person that is about 80 years old he's so righteous and so pure and, and he can see to places that we cannot even understand that exist and he was guiding me in my mission and in, in my way to go and to believe in myself and he gave me some very great advice and the house that are the family that are hosting us now in New York our families are very close to him and in the first time that I came to their house I gave a speech in a certain place in their house and after the class the the, the Barabai the landlord he showed me a picture of Rav Stern sitting in the same place that I gave my speech over there. And that was the biggest class that we have had in that tour. That event was so big, there were maybe 300 people in a house in Brooklyn. It was packed. People went out from the house because they couldn't hear. 300 people in two in, in, in the living room and, and in a certain hall, and the, the house was packed. 300 people sitting on the floor. And when that landlord came to me and showed me the, the picture of, of, of Stern, so I, of, I was very happy. I felt like it's the hand of the supervision to bring me to that place. Now, now we came back here, and again, that amazing family are hosting us in their house, and we became like family, like we, we, we took over the house. So they must accept us, they don't have a choice. So now we're there. And my wife is telling me, you're talking in the class, she's watching that on Facebook, and I can see Rafstein's face in your face. Oh my God. And she's saying, I'm looking at your face and I see him talking from your face. And I can't understand it. And she's saying, what, what, what's that? And she's holding the phone. And she sees it and she said, I cannot see you. She's saying, what's going on here? And then she, like, she had to move the phone and to look at me and she's saying, what's that? What's happening? And then she told me, you know, I feel like he is confirming every word that you say. That's how it feels. And I feel, and that's what my wife is saying. And so I'll explain to you why it's important that he's coming from my wife. And she's saying, I feel that when you're talking, you're thinking and you're quoting and you're bringing opinions and words of Torah of righteous people. And those righteous people are dressing themselves in you. And when I look at you, I can see their faces from your face. And they're using you to pass their message to the world. Now, why it's so important that my wife said it and not me. Because I read those things and I know that there exist because it's written in the Zohar Kadosh that that's what that happens to righteous people, that righteous people from the world to come, from heaven, choosing them to dress them and to make wonders in this world. So they're using them. So I know that that thing exists. But my wife, she never learned that. She never saw that. She never read that. And now when she saw that with her eyes, that's an evidence. That's a proof. If I'm going to think about myself that I hear the voice of my Rabbi for my, okay, so maybe something was familiar to me, maybe I feel related to, maybe I have memories, maybe something is happening. But when someone else, the third person is coming to you and telling you, just from his simple place, from his naive place, that's what I felt, that's what I experienced, that's what I saw. You cannot ignore that. That's a clear sign from heaven. So you can ask yourself, okay, that rabbi, that person, he achieved something great. That's wrong. The attitude is wrong. I did achieve amazing things, but I'm not unique in that. I started my path as a regular Baal Tshuva. When I was 20 years old, a soldier in the army, I was not keeping Shabbat. I was not putting tefillin. I was not eating kosher. I was not keeping no mitzvah at all. I didn't want it. I didn't care. I was not learning Torah. 
My family is completely secular family. And we, we, we never kept the law mitzvot. We were driving always in Shabbat. We didn't keep no tradition. We were eating treif. We were eating pork. We were eating everything, shrimps and, and, and everything. We didn't have no religion in our house. But when I started to find myself in my individual task of finding my true self, not finding Hashem, finding the Creator, finding God, finding the truth of the Torah, I didn't care about the Torah. I didn't care about the name Hashem. It wasn't talking to me. It wasn't as an, an aspect that I was desiring. It wasn't something that I was into at all. I just felt with myself that something is wrong in my life. I felt low, I felt depressed, I felt sad, I felt I'm lying to myself all of the time, I'm, I'm, I'm confused, I'm not myself. I felt lost. So I decided to look for myself. And what that I found in the end is Hashem. I found, after I found my soul, that I have a soul, I found that that soul got the root, got the beginning. And where is that beginning? In infinity, in the endless, the ends of Baruch Hu, the Creator Himself. So then I realized, okay, there is God. And then I threw myself on Him completely, as much as I can, to do more and more, and as much as I'm able to, and without destroying the spiritual connection. So if I did it, it means that every person can do that. And that's the reason why Hashem chose me to go and to give those speeches. Because I know that for a fact, that what that I achieved is not my individual success. It's not because of my righteousness, not because of my merit, because I don't have none. I started with you with horrible debts. I started in the lowest place in my life. I was violating Shabbat, I was drinking, I was driving stone and drunk, I was doing whatever. I was in Amsterdam, I was in Europe, I was in France, I was in England, I was in Italy, I was in Greece, I was in Cyprus, I was in hell before of the army. That was when I was young. I've been to Amsterdam for 19 days, and I'll tell you horrific stories from Amsterdam. Another time. Thank God that my classes are, most of them are, are recorded, so... There are some stories from Rav Dror's tour to Amsterdam. Yeah. It wasn't such an inspiring trip. It was a trip. <laughs> it was not inspiring. <laughs> Maybe after 20 years you can find some inspiration. It was low. It was 100% low. It was 100% low. Suffering and being confused and forgetting yourself and looking for the way back to the hotel and then puking all over the place. Well, I, I came back, I don't know how much it's in pounds, but I lost 10, 11, maybe 15 kilograms in, in 19 days in Amsterdam from drugs, from drugs. I, I came back home skinny, like, like a skeleton back home. After 20 days, a friend came to me in the same night, in the same evening, when I came back from Amsterdam, he looked at me, he was scared. He felt like, like, who are you? How you came back? Came back dead. And from that place of feeling so low, so broken, so crushed, so nothing, so worthless, I start seeking for something because I felt that I lost it. But something that I had, Something that belongs to me, my own connection, my own truth. Why I'm not brave enough to say my opinion? Why I'm not strong enough to, to do what I feel like? Help me with my money, help me with my children, help me with my husband, help me with my wife, help me with my hell. Help me with my sorrow to go out from my depression. Prayers that will come out from your heart will be the prayers that will be answered. Because the prayers that are coming from your heart will be prayers of truth. And prayers of truth, they are the closest ones to be answered. Because Hashem is close to everyone that will call Him with truth. So just call Him. In your language, in your words, just put your emotions and your will into words and express yourself. Say to Hashem, I need your help in this. Please help me with that. And don't let me forget you. 
And if something will go wrong, please let me be strong and to handle it. And to have the tools and the power to understand what you want from me. And the salvation is about to come. And you will see wonders. And you will see miracles in your own life. You will see that your prayers will be answered. It all depends on your stubbornness to go all the way and not to give up on your own dreams. And the Zat Hashem Hashem from heaven will open the gates of mercy to heal us all and to build us home. Amen. In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.